Brother Nick led us in a song this morning, Come Unto Me. I've been singing that song now for about two weeks. I don't know if he's heard me singing it uh, or if it's just hit him like it kind of hit me. Uh, but that song, multiple times in it, says He will give us rest. I don't know about you, but I know for myself, the past little bit I have just been exhausted. <laughs> Seems like the past few months, I've got just enough energy to do exactly what has to be done and no extra. <laughs> and when I get done what absolutely has to be done, I find myself a place on the couch and I lean back and I just rest for a little while. I talked with Brother Rick a couple months ago now, I guess it was, that we were talking. And he said that he, he had kind of been feeling the same way almost. Just a, just a drained feeling. But you know, in the midst of feeling exhausted, I came home yesterday. I had to go into work for a few hours yesterday morning to take care of some things. I came home. We had all these plans that we were going to get stuff done around the house. And when I got home, I was so tired. My body was tired. I had a headache. I didn't feel good. I was just worn out. And I found myself sitting in my recliner, leaned back, kicked back, and before long, I was fast asleep. <laughs> but as I was sitting there in my chair, with my body aching, with my head hurting, with just being completely wiped out, the Lord started bringing back to my memory the blessings that I had. You see, it didn't mean that I jumped up out of my chair and I ran around the house and I got the house clean and I got all these things done. But I began to remember the blessings that God had given to me and the fact that I am blessed. And as I said, I fell asleep. And I think it was about 12.30, 1 o'clock when I fell asleep. And the next thing I knew, I woke up and looked at my watch and it was about 3.30 that afternoon. The whole day had gone by. We had some plans that we were going to meet somebody at 4.30. We had to get up and get going. Sarah, I looked over and Sarah had fallen asleep and taken a nap on the couch. Sam was the only one that stayed awake all day long. <laughs> and we kind of got up and we were... Kicking ourselves a little bit, saying we needed to get this done and we needed to get that done and we needed to get this and that and the other done. And Sam piped up and he said, No, y'all needed to rest. Church, in the day and hour we're living in, we need to rest. You see, Brother Rick said something when I was talking to him a couple months ago about this just exhaustion that I was feeling. That he just made the statement, I wonder if this is more spiritual than it really is physical. And until you said that, Brother Rick, I really hadn't given that much thought. But when you said that, that immediately sparked something in me. And I haven't let go of it. And I thought, that has to be what this is. You see, church, the day and hour that we're living in, our bodies take such a toll from the work that we have to do. You see, we're all working jobs. We're all working, doing things, trying to carry a load, trying to keep up a house, trying to do this, trying to do that. And we don't really have a choice but to do it because that's the world we live in. But it's not just our physical bodies that are constantly carrying that load. Our spiritual man 
has been carrying a load that's seemingly getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Why? Because the world around us is growing darker and darker and darker. Which causes the attacks to come closer to home. Which causes the attacks to become more intense. Which causes the enemy to be more uh, 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 obvious working around us. But you see, it doesn't just stop there. It's also because we look around at the church and we don't see the church living up to what the church is supposed to be. We don't see the bride of Christ that's portrayed in the Scriptures being what the church is in the world that we live in today. And because of that, it adds an extra load to us because we're carrying that weight. We're saying, Lord, why isn't this happening? Why aren't we seeing it the way it should be? Why are things not the way they ought to be inside the church? But in the midst of all of this, what I want to get across to you this morning, church, is the fact that we need to rest. Without it, we're going to eventually die. Scientifically, your body can go so long without food. You can go so long without water. But if you don't get rest, if your mind doesn't rest, you will drive yourself to a point of insanity. Simply because you don't have that rest. And if you don't get it before long, it will eventually cause you to die. You see, Brother Chris brought out an excellent point this morning about those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. We need to be hungering and thirsting after righteousness. But it doesn't just need to stop with a hunger and a thirsting. We need to find our rest in righteousness, church. I didn't say find your rest in the church. But find your rest in righteousness. That we can see God come down and give us the peace of mind. Give us the strength that we need. You see, when I woke up yesterday afternoon and I'd been able to sleep for a couple hours, my headache was gone. My stomach didn't hurt anymore. I wasn't just worn out and beaten down. Yesterday when we were coming home from work, Sarah looked at me and she said, are you okay? I said, well, I just, I don't, I've got a headache. And a few minutes more went by and she said, are you sure that's all that's bothering you? You just, you're acting weird. You don't act like yourself. Something isn't right. And it all stemmed from the fact that I was so exhausted and so worn out. That my body had to rest in order for me to be who I am again. Church, we've got to understand, we've got to rest in the Lord. We've got to get that rest. Without it, we won't be ourselves. We'll be physically ill. We'll be spiritually ill. We're going to find ourselves not being able to do anything because we don't have the strength and the energy to go on. But as that song said this morning, come to me and rest. Church, God, Christ is our rest here this morning. He's not left us. He's not forsaken us. He's not turned a deaf ear to us or a blind eye upon us. But He's here to give us rest if we'll just go unto Him and find our rest in Him. Now what does this have to do with being blessed? I don't know. I wasn't planning on saying none of that. But what I found yesterday was as I sat down and I tried to find that rest that my body needed, what I actually found was my mind racing 
Going through all the things that had to be done. Going through all the things that I needed to do. I had to get ready for today. And I needed to get the house cleaned. And I needed to do this. And I needed to do that. And I have this responsibility and this weight on me. And all these things weighing on me. And I could not find rest in those things. But it was when the Lord reminded me of how blessed I truly am. And I began to think on those things. And I began to bring those things into my memory. That rest began to come. And the peace of God came over me that I was able to put my mind at rest and I was able to put my body in a state of rest and begin to recover what I needed. So what does all this have to do with being blessed? Church, if we're going to get the rest that we need, which in turn means if we're going to be able to fulfill the calling that God has on us and to go into all the world, if we're going to have the strength, if we're going to have the energy, if we're going to have the spirit to go into all the world, it's going to be because we have gone back to a place and remembered that we are a blessed people and let the blessings of God come down on us and let it rest on us for a little while that the peace of God begins to flow and the things around us don't matter. The circumstances of our lives don't hinder us but we're able to rest in the Lord you see Matthew the fifth chapter Jesus the Bible said opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. And so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Church, Jesus felt the need here to go through all these things. And again and again and again, He told the disciples, Blessed, blessed, you are blessed. They are blessed. Those around you are blessed. Church, it's time for us to remember that we are blessed. In the midst of everything going wrong, we are still blessed. With the very next scriptures there in Matthew the 5th chapter, the 13th verse says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I've read these Scriptures many, many times. When I was in school, if you don't know, I was homeschooled. We had a Bible class every day. And part of that was we had to, uh, we had memory verses that we had to memorize. And those verses, some of those verses are the ones here in Matthew, the fifth chapter. Let your light so shine before men. I've read those scriptures. I remembered them. I've kept them close to my heart. But it wasn't until this week that I paid attention to the fact that it was directly after Jesus taught the disciples about being blessed that He went straight into this. Saying that if the salt has lost its savor, it's good for nothing. Be a light. Don't hide it under a bushel, but shine it out to all mankind. And the Lord began to deal with me and work with me. 
And he began to lay something on my heart that was if we are not acting and we are not responding and we are not sharing the fact that we are a blessed people, are we not doing the same thing of hiding the candle under the bushel? Are we not covering up the light that God has given to us each and every one? If we don't respond and remember the fact that we are blessed, is the salt not lost its savor? Has it not gone and blessed us and touched us and ministered to us? But now is good for nothing. Because we're not remembering it. Because we're not living in it. Because we're not holding on to it. But church... Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. We can't hide the blessings of God. We can't let go of the blessings of God. They followed us this far and they're going to continue to follow us. They mean something to us. They've changed us. They've changed our lifestyle. They've changed the way we look. The way we act. The way we dress. And because of that, people take note. But at the same time, if we fail to continue on to live in the blessings of God, To hold those things close to us. To allow them to continue to minister to us. You see, as I was reading these scriptures this week, studying. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I went back in my mind, went back to when my grandma passed away uh, 11 years ago now. And I remember the tears that began to flow the night that she died and it was uncontrollable and I couldn't get it to stop and I couldn't come bring my life back together and get my emotions under control and figure out what I was supposed to do next because she meant so much to me in my life. But that blessing that God came down and He began to minister and in the time of my mourning He comforted me. It didn't just bless me those 11 years ago but it came back to me yesterday and it blessed me again then and I was able to hold on to that and I was able to get my mind to calm down and I was able to rest in that. Church, the blessings of God are timeless. It's not just the fact that they did something for us 20 years ago, 30 years ago, two months ago, two weeks ago, but they're still good today. The same blessings that He gave to us all those times ago are still good for us today. And they still have a work to do today. Don't let go of those blessings. Too many times we get in a place in our lives that the situations around us seem so big that we don't know how to face them. We don't know what to do with them. And we begin to start questioning maybe not necessarily God Himself, but questioning how are we going to get through this? How is God going to bring us through this? How are we going to see the victory in this? But Paul told the Philippian church, they're in the fourth chapter in the eighth verse. Brother Chris shared it in our Sunday school lesson here this morning. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Paul was once again reminding the Philippian church, remember the blessings of God. Think on the good things of God. Think on those things. 
Church, we've got to get our minds set on the good things of God. On the blessings of God. And in those things, we'll find our strength. We'll find the rest that we need. We'll have the ability for our bodies, spiritually and physically, to be able to recover so that we can continue on in the work that's ahead of us. Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter. The third through the fifth verse tells us, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Church, I think many times we fail to see or fail to take hold of the power that's in this Scripture. You see, we were instructed to bring into captivity the very thoughts. (laughs) When our mind gets to racing, when the things around us get so so overwhelming at times that we don't know which way to turn, we don't know which way to go to, and nothing is good anymore, everything is bad. The Bible has instructed us to cast down the very imagination. Those things aren't the truth. Those things aren't what God has done for us. The blessings of God far outweigh the bad things that we've had to go through to get the blessings of God. They far outweigh the things that we've seen up to this point. So we've got to cast down the very imagination of those things that are bad. Of those things that are overwhelming. And we've got to bring them under subjection to the obedience of Christ to remember the blessings of God. Church. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you without the blessings of God it's very hard to find joy. And in turn without joy it's very hard to minister to anybody else. Believe it or not, this world has enough depressing things in it. (laughs) People don't want to come and listen to what you have to say if you're depressed and beat down and downtrodden as well. And if we're not able to minister to people, then we're not fulfilling the call that God has placed upon mankind. See, it's not just on me as a preacher, as a pastor. But Jesus said, go ye. We are the ye, every single one of us. Go ye into all the world. So if you're not doing that, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, if you're not remembering the blessings of God, you're unable to fulfill the calling of God. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump all the way out there. If you're not fulfilling the calling of God, you will not find yourself remaining a child of God. Some of the darkest moments of my life were when I didn't feel like I could fulfill my calling. There was no peace. There was no happiness. There was no joy to be found in anything because I wasn't doing what God had called me to do. Church, what I'm getting at today is don't neglect the blessings of God. 
We've just come through Thanksgiving. Our minds, I hope, have gone back to think about all the good things that God has done for us. But it shouldn't end now that Thanksgiving's over. Daily, when we're going through these things, when we're, when we're feeling overwhelmed, when we're trying to find that rest and that peace and it can't seem to be found anywhere, we've got to go back to the blessings of God and the fact that we are a blessed people today. Stand with me if you would. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the 15th through the 18th verse says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. There's not a thing in this world that can come against us that's going to be able to exceed the blessings that God is going to and has already given to us. Church, you are a blessed people today. Let us live in that blessing. I don't know about you, but I know in our house, there's not too much better than a Sunday afternoon nap. <laughs> but I can tell you from experience, I've laid down and though my eyes may have shut and though I may have gone to sleep, we've got a fancy thing on our bed now that tracks our sleep and tells us what time we fell asleep and what time we woke up and did we get deep sleep or light sleep or were we tossing and turning all these things. Though that tracker may say that I went to sleep, I've woke up and I never got any rest. But church, if you need rest today, it can be found in the blessings of God. Remember the things that God has done for you. The blessings that He's given to you. I want us to find a place to pray this morning.